Hey guys, welcome to Production Music Live. My name is Francois and today's video we are going to have a quick walkthrough through this Tim Engelhardt project file from the Tim Engelhardt pack. It's in templates, it's called Climb. You can find the link in the description. The whole pack contains templates, a sample pack, a MIDI pack and 95 Diva presets from Tim. And this video is going to be a bit shorter, a quick inspiration session going through the elements and seeing how this is put together. So I'm selecting this area here and I'm copying it into the back of the track so we can go through it one by one. First of all, in our low end group, we have kick and bass and sub. In the drums group, we have all types of drum elements and shakers and stuff. And in the music group, we have strings and arps and that kind of thing. And as you can see, it's a fully arranged track, almost seven minutes long or six and a half minutes long. And let's look at this pattern here. We have a nice little kick sound with a nice low end. And this little bit of a punch in the higher frequencies that works nice as a click or as the top kick element. And below that we have a sub kick. So boom, put up, boom, boom. Make sure you're on headphones or on good sub speakers to listen to this. It's the fourth position of the first hit and the third position of the second hit. So that's what we are repeating here. And below that, we are playing a shaker. And we have this perk two, which serves as our clap, but it's not a clap. playing the clap position and we have this percussive element here which can also be found in the one shots of that sample pack. How does it sound without the echo? That's one of the devices Tim is using a lot by the way. Yeah, we're just adding a little bit of delay on that with uh, 16th notes delays and feedback of 29%. What does the filter look like? Uh, pretty basic here. Stereo setting and just slightly applied. How would it sound much more applied? But we already have a little bit of that delay feel in the actual sample. So two transients here. Don't get confused. This is just the echo on top of that. Then we have this element here, which is like a pink noise or something like that. And we're playing. Super typical for uh, contemporary melodic techno tracks. Different velocities here. Also a little bit of delay on top, a 16th note and 8th note. It's also being sent through the reverb, the drum room reverb on our send channel here. Decay time of 700 milliseconds. Already a nice groove going and then we have this hi-hat here. 16th notes, but we are really taking care of velocities here. So very low ones, and then that one, that fourth one here completely up, that fourth one here up, the second one here up, it's the first one here and the fourth one. So it's avoiding the third position. Side chained and removed some resonant parts here. Also a low cut because nothing of these frequencies is really needed. And why is the third position not taken with this hi-hat? It's probably because we want to leave room for this one.
And this one is serving as our offbeat hi-hat here. It's a sample in this case. But you can see it's playing in, in the third position. And it's also playing a little bit in the first position. And what is going on here? I can see several notes, but we only hear this one, right? So where's this one? Okay, it's... Where's the automation? The vocoder on top is automated, so this guy here. So we have echo of vocoder, vocoder adding some noise, but why aren't we playing this note? Go into the clip and here you can see envelopes, the clip volume is taken up for the third position and it's taken down for that position. So we would have to bring this back up. You can also do that in your clip view. Wasn't needed. So this is also might be an indicator that the whole song production might have started in the session view. So here to generate ideas and later go over into the arrangement view. So let's play that all together. And now we also have this top loop on top of it. We also have loops here, top loops. Ah, I think we are using this one. Like how powerful is this pink noise kind of percussive element here? Or white noise filtered down or something like that. This is a, maybe a mixture. And then what is missing now? Let's put in our bass line, which is played with diva and it's a sustained note. But we are trying to avoid overlaps between the notes and we're leaving a little bit of air at the end of each two bars and this one is being played early to keep it interesting. And what else is happening here? We have some overtones, so a little bit of overdrive on the whole thing. This channel EQ is just taking down the low frequency, it's like a low shelf and a little bit of a high shelf here filter being automated at times and what about this echo you might be wondering what an echo on a bass what's going on so our primary bass for our, our i don't know subsystems on the club is this sub kick here right that one is adding the rhythm and this one is kind of the root for our chords and this one also gets its echo starting from 140 hertz here, so no, no lower frequencies affected. Sidechain to the kick. Okay, there's that. And what else do we have in our music group? We have a pad edition with an um, operator playing a sine wave and another sine wave on top of that. An octave higher here. and some strings from the Ableton Viola section legato. They're panned a bit to the left. This one is panned a bit to the right. It's kind of nice because these strings are more focusing on the front part of 
each bar and those added pad sounds a bit more on the back. And what else do we have here? We have this plug pattern. So it's not too complicated. We are just putting in those notes and you see we also have different velocities playing. That's super important to keep it interesting. And this one is quite loud here. And this one is also triggering kind of something like a white noise. But it also doesn't sound the same all the time. So we have this MIDI effect here taking care of some chance in our velocities. So sometimes velocity, like there's randomness applied here. And sometimes it's, it's a bit more powerful and sometimes a bit less. So this is why it sounds super natural in a way. Let's quickly look at the diva patches here. So this one is generating this arp or plug sound. So what do we have? We have something in between a saw wave and triangle wave and the same here. And this oscillator is not active and a little bit of feedback applied here as well. And then Tim has his custom design chains here, EQ and dynamics. So really taking care of some resonant parts. What is this, for example? Yeah, definitely some resonance there. And this one could also get too powerful in the mix. He obviously wants to focus a bit more on those parts here and not interfere too much with our strings and pad additions here with these sounds. Sidechain to the kick as well. And what else do we have? We didn't look at the bass patch. Let's quickly do that as well. What is the bass playing? square wave and somewhere in between a saw and a triangle wave those two oscillators are active no effects applied and if we take the echo off we get the dry sound and you can hear that longer release on the sound which is controlled here quite nice and natural sounding as well. Okay, and two more elements which he calls profit here. What is that? So top melodies on top of everything and... Erosion on top of that. Taking care of the noisy elements. And what are we playing here? We are in the digital oscillator. So as you might know in Diva, you can switch around between different oscillators or different oscillator modules. And as you can see, in this case, we are using the digital oscillator module here from those five different modules available in Diva. And if you look at Diva, we are playing the patch PML Engelhardt Keys 5. So you'll find all these patches in this Diva folder here. I can't see them in Ableton because they're not Ableton compatible files. You have to go through your file system and load them right into Diva. This one is actually using one of those five oscillator modules. In this case, the digital oscillator with some nice triangle waves. And as mentioned, you'll find 95 of those sounds designed by Tim in this pack. And again, we are trying to use a little bit of randomness in the velocities here. It's a super nice trick to make your melodic elements sound a bit more natural. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so that's it for this quick inspirational walkthrough for today. Feel free to comment below what you want to see next. Leave a like if you enjoyed this video. Consider subscribing to the channel. Also, feel free to visit us on productionmusiclive.com, our website supporting this channel and giving us the ability to put out content like this, packs like this, and videos like this. Take a look at the description if you're interested in the Tim Engelhardt pack or start to finish courses from PML. And I hope to see you next time. Thank you.